he despertado, encadenado. Oh, vela, chao, vela, chao, vela, chao, chao, chao. La tierra mía me la han robado y han incendiado mi país. Abran sus ojos, hay un tirano. Oh, vela, chao, vela, chao. Vela, chao, vela, chao, vela, chao, chao, chao. Sonrisa ensangrentada, nuestra lucha continuará. Y si me muero, yo haré riendo. Vela, chao, vela, chao, vela, chao, chao, chao. Y si mi cuerpo arde en la llama.
the greatest interviewer of all time. Dan Allen Gaming. If there's one podcast you want to hear this year, it's Dan Allen Gaming. Dan, we've got a job to do. Mr. Allen, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Dan Allen. Anyone who's anyone has heard of the likes of you, especially your YouTube channel. It's amazingly entertaining. Good job. This is Geralt of Rivia, and you're watching Dan Allen Gaming. Yeah. This is Agent 47. Subscribe to Dan Allen Gaming. He's a great guy. I always, always knew we were destined for something great to happen. A lot of people want to change their cards, not me. I like the hand we've been dealt. I'm gonna come find you, little man thing. Dan, I knew you'd love me. Come on now, just a little taste. Dan Allen Gaming. He's a lovely boy. <laughs> Super Dan, you number one. Woohoo! This is Colt calling out to Dan the Animal Allen. I'm gonna break this fucking loop. Oh, I'm gonna break your neck. You're watching Dan Allen Gaming, and you're going to regret it. Dan, you and I are gonna take back the universe for humanity. We're having a problem with Metal Gear, and I need your help. So contact me by codec, damn it! Dan Allen! You and I going dark now! Are you being cheeky, Dan? I'd rather keep this for close encounters. Tune <laughs> into Dan Allen Gaming, or else I'm coming after you. You're fucking down. I've been interviewed by Dan Allen of Dan Allen Gaming. Not to be mistaken for Van Allen. You know the belts? No, not the same guy. Not even related. Okay, Jackie Howard. All the best to you. Just don't cross me. Dan Allen Gaming, you have got to be one of the best things to come out of Australia. Did you know that? You and me, we would have been unstoppable. Anyways, outlaws for life, partner. Your face, your ass, what's the difference? It's okay, Dan. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. But you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurts! Let's find out if Dan Allen Gaming really is the best fucking show in town. Dan! You eat babies! Everybody knows that! How are we all, guys? Welcome back to another live interview. Today we have Jess on, who has appeared in many, many shows that you may have heard of. We're talking The Boys, The Expanse, Working Moms, Working Moms, The Ninth, Letter Kenny, Jupiter's Legacy, but of course the main one that we are here for today, Far Cry 6. Who have we got in here today? We have James. Hello, Dan. First, it disappeared on me, just as I read it. James, send that back again. Kisma, how you doing? Great to see you in here. Dark One, you like that intro? 
Let's head into the chat room, guys. Evan 1009 or Evine? Evan Evine? Which one? Frosty, great to see you in here. Cyber. First time watcher and listener, I'm very excited. Already subscribed. I hope you for more interviews. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you, James. And uh, if this is your first time watching a live stream, you've got a lot to watch, James. Seriously, brother you've uh i've interviewed troy baker who else david hayder jennifer hale the cast of resident evil village the cast of cyberpunk i mean the list goes on so you got a lot to watch thanks for thanks for being here man dz how you doing Chewy, you love the intro? I love it. Thank you. First time watching. Great to have you in here. A few first timers. It's good to see. Timothy Wood. Viva Libertar, Dan. <laughs> uh, that's it. That's it. Are you playing through, are you? How many of you have played through the game? It's been out for a week or so now. I've been there twice, male, female. And guys, also, we've got the female Danny Rojas on tomorrow. Um, Nisa is coming on the show. So that should be a big one. Should be a lot of fun, that one. I'm fine. How are you? Finally catched one of your lives again. It's great to see you in here, Kisma. What have you been playing? You been busy? Mr. Skeleton, first time again, another first timer. It's great to have you in here. You love David Hayter, there you go. You got an hour chat with me and him straight after this. You like the intro? Thank you. I put that together myself. I'm pretty happy with it. You love the new place, Tarek? <laughs> yeah, look, it's not a bad little bar area. The only problem is no one ever comes in. It's only just me, usually. Yeah, Agent 47. It's another one. Hunter. Sergeant Dan. Sir. Hunter reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Hunter. Appreciate it. Uh, can I get a tango on the 5-6-1, Hunter? Thank you very much. Bravo out. Garbert. How you doing, brother? Great video, by the way, man. On the Easter eggs. Good stuff. Long time, John. I'll never forget that that username and that uh, that face. Nick Boone. Hello from Russia. What time is it in Russia? Yeah, they did. They advertised the female version. Uh, Jess is in here, guys. So let's get this going. I hope you enjoy it. Send your questions through. Best way is super chat. Otherwise, just put them in the normal chat. I should be able to get to as many as possible. With that being said, guys, leave a like if you can, and let's get into it. Connecting Jess, 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 Jess. <laughs> we are live, baby. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very well. It's great this to have you on. Meeting, being live. I'm like, oh my god, I, well, I've never done a, this. Oh really? Mm -hmm. First, first time for everything, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was your first time doing mocap, was it not? It was. Yeah, it was my first time doing mocap, um, and it was. 
it felt like such an easy fit in a way. It felt like I should have been doing it forever. And why is that? Because of the theatre background that you have or just the, yeah? Exactly. It's like this beautiful kind of space that melds the extraness of theatre in a way with the beautiful nuances that you can achieve in, in film and TV. So it was kind of this this nice hybrid. I've got so much to ask you about this process and uh, and all the stuff you've done. But um, first off, thanks for coming on. And uh, how are you? Happy to be here. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I'm like, is this really echoey where I am? Oh, okay. it's a little bit echoey, but that's it's all good. I'm There's... so sorry. I'm in a kitchen. Oh, it's um. fine. <laughs> I've, it's, it's fine. At least yeah, I'm we sure can... you've heard worse. Yeah, I was going to say I've heard yeah. a lot worse over the <laughs> over the many interviews. Uh, people are very happy to have you in here. Um, John says she's beautiful, so that, that's a good way to start the day. <laughs> oh, honey, thank you, <laughs> thanks, John. Um, so, talk um, to... yeah, go ahead, please. No, I was just going to say, I'm doing great. I'm in New York City. I oh, leave tomorrow. Yeah, I, I was here just for, to like to visit friends, to see some shows, to leave Canada, because I hadn't left Canada since before COVID. So that was nice. And um, yeah. So I'm good. is Broadway back? In uh, Broadway's in... back. Oh, nice. So did you see mm -hmm. a Broadway show or? Mm-hmm. I yeah. saw three shows. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's the top one? What's the recommendation? Oh, there's this show called Dana H. And it's one woman on stage. And it's a transcript of uh, an event that happened in her life. It's her being interviewed about it. Wow. And they play her voice over the speaker. And the actress lip syncs the whole play and it sounds wow. like how could this be compelling but it is the most like edge of your seat performance me and my friend were like jaw dropped at, at wow. the end we were like that's people are calling it documentary theater like wow there's a new genre called documentary theater yeah that sounds anyway. awesome it's when i get cool. over there next i might have to check it out what's it called again Dana H. Dana H. Like the name Dana and H. Yeah. Nice. So, so you, you're in Australia? I am. I'm in Australia. 8.30 a.m. at the moment. Melbourne. Oh, I love Melbourne. Have you been or not? I have been. Oh, I you have? It. My, one of my best friends in the whole world lives in Melbourne and I can't wait to go back. I, I love it a lot. Were you here for holiday or work? Soon. Yep. Holiday. Yep. And I really only spent time in Melbourne and Byron Bay. And I was uh, yep. charmed by both of the places. So. <laughs> well, Melbourne's a little bit like uh, Canada in a way, a bit like Toronto, I've found when I went to Toronto. Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's you guys have great restaurants. You have like, you know, that kind of vibe of there's a there's a youthfulness, but there's also like a. Uh, sophistication and mm. yeah I, I loved it so were you born were you born you were born in Canada right and raised in Winnipeg yeah yes which is a country right in the middle of I mean sorry it's a city <laughs> it's a country right in the Can middle <laughs> of the globe um no it's a city in the middle of the country um and uh, it's very cold and it's kind of isolated from the rest of the country. And, uh, but it's a, it was an interesting place to grow up. Like you have to make your own entertainment. So it's all good. So are you still based over in, in Canada or are you in working in LA these days? Um, I'm ba I'm still based in Toronto. I still live in Toronto, um, but I usually spend a lot of time in the winter specifically in Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm playing around with where I want to be based a little really? bit. Really? Because I'm guessing as an actor, you sort of have to be 
near LA or not? Not necessarily, no. no. I mean, no. The the thing is, and this was happening before COVID, but we as actors do a lot of self-tape auditions, meaning we're taping the auditions ourselves, and then we send them to a casting director. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that because of that model, people are realizing they can actually live wherever they want. And then when if they get hired on a job, they would relocate for that amount of time, but you don't necessarily have to be in any specific city to audition anymore. So does that change? Do you reckon the last few years has changed the game completely? Yeah, I mean, it, again, this was happening before COVID, but COVID's definitely reinforced it because yeah. we couldn't go into a room anyway. So yeah. um, I think that's not, I think that's just gonna like keep being the norm. Um, yeah. But just cool with me. So talk to us about this game. I mean, this this performance. I was I'll tell you what, this this was the best character in the game. Just quietly. <gasps> just quietly, okay? Yeah. And I'm not just saying mm. that because you're here, okay? Seriously, phenomenal performance. I'm like, Thank who is so who much. is this woman? She's unbelievable. <laughs> and then I then I realized who it was. But yeah, how did it all come mm. about? Uh, first of all, thank you so much. I <laughs> so deeply appreciate that. Um, I love her too. Uh, it came about, I had auditioned maybe like six months, nine months before I heard anything. It was like a long time. Um, and I think I was maybe the last person to be hired actually like the last actor to be hired. Um, I think I know why. I think I know why. I think the character was meant to be male at first. Maybe. Yeah. It's possible. I know that, I, I do know the character changed a lot mm. um, as they were creating the game and as they were writing. Um, and so, yeah, I, I auditioned and and they liked me and, and that's about it. Um, she was one of if not my favorite character to ever play mm, um i got that sense being, <laughs> being able to say those words and those rally cries and and her, the speeches and her strength and her attitude being able to do that during covid sorry there's an ambulance like i'm in new york so there's noises everywhere um but being able to do that during a time of upheaval really in the world, which felt like was happening, um, especially in North America, uh, it was so cathartic, like just to be able to put all of what I was feeling into a character that's, she's a revolutionary, it's, it's incredible. So um, she felt like, honestly a bit of like a heaven sent for me like yeah because on your time. on your instagram you said it's got you behind the the billboard of far cry 6 or in front of it mm -hmm. and it said this character saved my sanity was in the caption oh yeah mm. oh yeah to be able to go to work during a lockdown and i know you know this because i know that melbourne has been in a oh. crazy lockdown yeah but now it's changing or something which yeah, I'm we're getting out, getting out this week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But being able to, you know, during a time where I couldn't really see anyone, um, it was a stay at home order in Toronto for a long time mm. to be able to go to work and to uh, just scream and yell <laughs> and, <laughs> and like command space and yeah. to um and to and to lead and and to be you know energized and inspired and mobilized people it was it it felt really like oh my gosh this is why my mental health is okay right now it's because i have this character that i can channel all of this into um and it's also you're working was, with all these amazing people as well you know oh gosh and it's oh my gosh even before COVID, it was 
such a blessing to work with these actors, but during it yeah. was a whole other gift. We all were like, I don't want to stop working. Like, please just like add on extra days. Like I want to keep hanging out with these people and playing and our, our writer, showrunner, um, Naveed, he is such a great collaborator. Um, his writing is fabulous, but also his ability to like, if I had questions about anything or which rarely happened, but maybe felt like something needed to shift a little bit, like he was so available and um, it just created such a nice vibe on the set. Like when, when the leader is an approachable, um, reasonable person, it really sets the tone. And um, yeah, we were really lucky. We were really lucky to have him. I'm having him on the show. Is there anything you want me to pass on to him? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, I think he knows how much I adore him. Um, I, so I'll let him know you hate him. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> You'll know you're lying. Um, there was this speech that Clara has um, where they Which are one? around. It's the one, it's kind of one of her big last ones. She's throwing the the firecrackers into the fire. She's trying she's trying to make a scene. Um and she there she's in a circle, she's sort of circling around the fire. Mm-hmm. Um that scene and that day, there was a lot going on at the time with the Trump election. And we all were feeling really, um, there was just this feeling in the room that day of like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're in this situation. Like, I, I mean, we're not even American, most of us, but we're so affected by American politics living in mm. Canada. Mm. And I remember, you know, and I, I don't mean to get political about it, but it, it was just no, like, there was this, there was this feeling of, um, this sort of feeling of maybe a bit of like a defeat or like, I can't believe this is a world we live in. And something about being given that speech on that day, just like, oh, like get, I got goosebumps thinking about it. It's mm. like everyone in the room, I feel like all of our energy changed. Like we actually kind of became these people talking about, um, you know, a need the need to change <laughs> the state of the world and and there was this kind of little really bit cool of a parallel thing. for you guys yeah yeah there was some sort of parallel mm. uh stuff happening and anyway i just remember that day looking at at nav and we both like had tears in our eyes like we were just both like i i and i said to him like thank you so much for writing this like i i feel so lucky to have these words pass my lips and um yeah it was just it was really special kisma says it's so wholesome to hear her talk like that about her co-worker workers mm. <laughs> thanks digital demonic hey dan been playing far cry since last week it was awesome six hours both characters hi from south australia thanks digital dog boy Thank you for coming a member for two months. I appreciate it, mate. Cyber, was it difficult to get the accent down, Jess? Um, I mean, yeah, but also we had a great coach, um, yeah. this guy named Carlos Diaz. He, who also um, he plays some of the supporting characters on the um, in the game. Um, he luckily Ubisoft gave us that resource. And so we really got to ask him anything we had, mm. you know, every time if I was going in for like a, a few days to record, he, I'd always have a dialect coaching with him and, um, and he was always there listening and like would help if he's like, Oh, that sounds a little bit, you know, mm. let's try that again. Or, 
And so having that support was like massive because it's not super common that you have something like that. No. Um, and uh, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> I want to know what's the difference for you because you've done so many TV shows and movies and, and all that. And I want to know what's, what was the big difference for you doing this game over those projects? The hours. <laughs> what more, more hours well it's in in a way yeah i don't know it's well in the video game world it's less hours it's more like a nine to five job it's like you go in in the morning you leave at a reasonable yeah. time um and in film and TV, you never know when you're going to finish. Like you could go in at five in the morning and good luck trying to make plans in the evening. Like you have no idea when you're going to be done. So kind of s swallows up your life in, in a way, um, not complaining. It's just, it's a different beast and they, they need you to be on set because things take the time they take. Um, mm. Also acting with a helmet on <laughs> that has all these cameras yeah. and then like trying to see your scene partner through the can like just past the camera is a bizarre thing you need to get used to um and during covid it was even more bizarre because if we we were doing one actor's body and face capture at a time because we had to wear masks so Oh. let's say it was Danny's coverage. So this is going to be Danny's uh, pass. The rest of us would have to wear masks and just the, how hard it would be to not only speak through these cameras, but then to look at your scene partner who you can barely see because they have a mask on and their headset on. <laughs> it's just like, it's bizarre. Like it, it's a bizarre thing. Like it, in that way, it was a very interesting challenge. Um, but you've worked on this. You worked on this for a number of years, yeah. So I, I were yeah about a year and a about a year and a half. Um, okay. It a, a sort of like I I'd finished all my motion capture yeah. in twenty twenty. And then in okay. 2021, I had to do a lot of voice because I'm giving the player so much instruction. So I'd have to go in yeah, just to do voice. Over the phone. Uh, yeah. Didn't think of that. Yeah. 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 Um, how much, so how much voice work compared to motion capture? Like if you had to put a percentage on it? Um, it's probably hard it's to remember. Probably, it's probably 75% motion capture mm. and 25% voice um, because the stuff that is happening with my body, like when I'm, when my character is actually there and you see her, they're capturing my voice at the same time. Um, it's really just those specific things like, like the, the voiceover stuff. So on the phone and yeah, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. It's really funny doing video games though, because you have to record, and I'm sure the other actors have talked to you about this, but you have to record all these different ways of dying. No, like you have to... no, I've heard that from other actors, but not, not oh, yeah. Sean, yeah. It's so funny. Like it's, you have to, you know, <laughs> do six, six different versions of dying by being burned alive. Like it's that kind of- Is that what it says? Where... Is that what it says in front of you? We need six yeah. versions of you burning to death. <laughs> yeah, they'll literally be like one that lasts uh... two seconds, one that lasts five seconds, one that lasts eight seconds, like, and- Now uh, I've got to try was... and burn you in the game. I'm going to do that straight <laughs> after this interview. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm going to send it Please. to you. Yeah. record it oh yeah. my gosh there's also we had to do like being killed by a crocodile that was another one. Oh, um, that's awesome that's great yeah, yeah. and all the different versions of being shot like being shot but you're not dead or being shot and it's really painful but it's <laughs> like 
you're scared you might die. Like it's like <laughs> all these different, like, you yeah. know, it's like one out of 10, it's like, okay, do a four, do a six, do it. Anyway, That's fantastic. it's fun, but you, you have to be really careful as an actor not to burn your voice. Um, that's a big concern because you'll go in for three or four hours to do voice and you're, and in these cases you're screaming. Well, they leave um, them to the end, don't they? Usually the efforts. Yeah. 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 But, uh, but even so it's like, even just talking for four hours is a straining. Yeah. It, it can, yeah. it, you know, anyway, but um, no, no. it's fun. It, I love, I love it. It's so fun. I've done um, a voice for Assassin's Creed since. Um, and that was, yeah, I just, it's, it reminds me so much of kind of being in theater school, like all yeah. the weird games you got to play in theater school is like, you rarely get to do that as a professional anymore. And this gives you the opportunity to kind of play in that like really imaginary space of mm. like, okay, I'm being eaten by a crocodile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so do you want to do more video game work now that you've got a little bit of the bug or what? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'd love yeah. to. I love it. Yeah. It's, I mean, I, I think especially being, especially being a woman to get to play an action character in some way is pretty exciting. And I didn't realize how great it was going to feel until I did it. Um, Cause I think I've always been sort of like, I don't know, maybe a snob in a way of like, well, I don't need to do action movies. I need to do serious dramas and da da da. And not that I don't love serious dramas, but I realized like the pleasure of, of mm. doing something like this too. And it's, it's really empowering. Like it really is. But you and did have some great stuff to work with on this one. This, I wouldn't even mm -hmm. call it, it was an action, but like, you know, this had some heavy stuff in there, some good, good material. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big time, big time. It was such a gift, it really. Kisma says, did you meet Giancarlo Esbacito? I sure did. Mm. I did meet him. Um, and just watching him was like, I, I mean, I only did one scene with him. And that was a fantastic scene, by the way. Yeah. 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 He's, and uh, like, what a pro. Like, he's such a pro. He like... I remember he made this choice to be eating in the scene and mm. he's like chewing while he's talking, but he's not actually eating anything, right? Like he's just faking it because really, we're doing a video game. Could have fooled and me. So, I know, <laughs> me too. And I'm sitting right beside him. I'm going, I can't believe this guy's not actually eating anything. It's as if he's eating something. Like he's so good at <laughs> pretending he's eating. Um, <laughs> but stuff like that, like his choices were so interesting and he was so kind and he's very, he's just such a pro. Like he's just. Well, what makes him, a, what makes him a pro over other actors you've worked in? Not that the other actors aren't amazing, but like what's, is there a specific like difference that you can notice? Yeah. It's, they make bold choices. Oh, like he, okay. he made a bold choice in and he embodied it fully. He mm. didn't go halfway with it and go like, oh, I don't know, am I being too big? He just was, he just went, he was, he felt like he was going big and, mm. and he was confident about it. So you trust him as an audience member, as a scene partner, I'm just watching him and I trust him completely. Like, and that's what makes a good actor in, in my view is one that you can just relax when you watch them um oh. because it's like they're okay you don't have to feel nervous for them like they got it <laughs> and he's like that like he's got yeah. a presence he's just he fills up everything he's doing um and so just watching them was like i always learn when i get the fortunate 
opportunity to work with actors like that. And I'm just like, wow, like they just trust themselves. Like they, they made a choice and there's, they're, they're leaning into it and it's a beautiful thing to see. Um, is it hard when, when an actor like that's going big in front of you and you know, like in your mind that their, their acting is phenomenal right now, but you're the character. You've got to stay in character. Do you know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You're yeah, in yeah, the scene you. with him, and you know his acting is so good. I, I don't know. Do, do I, I know. I know exactly. What you yeah. That's so funny. There's definitely been moments mm. um, where I've forgotten my line because I just started watching the actor. <laughs> like I was like, "Oh, right." Um, yeah. Uh, I wish I had a specific example. I can't, I can't think off the top of my head, but it's definitely happened yeah. before. You, there's, I feel like there's always a bit of that. There's always mm. a bit of you kind of watching them. Um, but the other part of your brain has to be stronger. The part of yeah, your yeah. brain that goes like be present in the scene mm. needs to be really strong. Otherwise you're going to stay <laughs> stuck in the watching because it's not only that you're watching them. That means you're watching yourself. Like it's kind of, it takes you out of the moment. So, but it's natural and it happens, but you really need that other muscle to bring you back. Dog boy, 76, Dan, you're a legend. I'm off to bed. And Jess, you angel, you smashed it. You have, <laughs> so sweet. you have bigger roles coming love tyler thank you thanks tyler what a lovely thing to say um uh, batman here says did far cry 6 impact your personal life interesting question i mean i think we touched on it before in terms of mental health and that yeah yeah um yeah i think i think especially while i was doing the motion capture i think i felt like I was even walking differently in my, in just my normal life. Like I felt like I was mm. more grounded and uh, just taking up space, like just really like kind of like taking up space, moving through the world a bit more confidently. And it's, that's, that's the blessing of being an actor and maybe the curse, depending on the character you're playing, but they do sort of rub off on you. Um, and I love that. And also I've made amazing friends like from this, from, from this game. Um, and yeah, so in a way it's definitely impacted my life. Is there anyone particular <laughs> in the cast that you really got along with? Um, um, well, I was already friends with Umberly who plays um, Yonran, like the baseball. Oh, great character. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um uh, but I worked a lot with Nisa and Sean. Yeah. Um, I became really good friends with with Manuel, who plays Philly, who's incredible. Oh, he's great. He's yeah, really great. Yeah, he's, he's the real deal. And he's like, he he also helped do some of the writing on the game. Is he, is he like the character a little bit as well? Have they got a lot of, have they got similarities or not? I wonder what he'd say, probably yeah. in a way. Okay. Like they're both very kind of go with the flow, like kind of a bit mm. easygoing um, and like a little like kooky in in the best way. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, definitely those, definitely those guys. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Powell, hey Dan, hey Jess. You have really pretty and gorgeous hair. Tremendous performance. Thank you. <laughs> Are you talking about my hair? I don't think so. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I think he's talking about your hair, unfortunately. Thank you. <laughs> you have nice hair too, Dan. Come on. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, far out. Um. Now I'm going to mention a spoiler here, guys. Okay. So everyone in the chat, you've been warned. Okay. Spoiler warning. Now, why do you always die in everything you're in? <laughs> uh, Good question. <laughs> um, That's an actor's uh, worst nightmare. You I have just want to stay alive. I need to die. Oh, I want to stay alive. Um, 
I do uh, die in a lot of things. I don't know why. I don't know. No. It's uh, it's the. I think in a, in some ways it might be because um, because I'm Canadian and I've been and I work on a lot of American things. There's nothing to do with being Canadian, but it's because. Yeah. I'm a local, and and many times I'm a local actor on some of the, on some of the shows I do. Yeah, meaning right. they they if they're just keeping a character around for one season, let's say, mm-hmm. it's almost better for a production to hire someone who's local because it's in a way less of an investment mm. than bringing someone, you know, from LA or whatever to come live in Canada for a few months and then die and. <laughs> It, like yeah. so they're they kind of like look for locals to play some of those parts i guess yeah um that's the only thing that makes any sense to me um i'd like to think i'm not cursed uh forever with with the because dying because in games usually the actors i've spoken to they they don't usually they haven't seen the full script a lot oh of the yeah time. that you happens I mean? too yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so i was wondering like did you know about your character's death early on or did that something you discovered later on or what good question i probably i don't think i knew i didn't know i didn't know up front no i think i i think i probably knew maybe my first meeting with them after i'd gotten the job yeah but um yeah, especially with a video game, you're not getting all the scripts right away because they're building the game while you're doing it. Mm. So they're like, they'll realize like, oh, we need a scene here. Or like there's, there's, it's kind of a, that's why the, that's why it takes so long mm. is they're constructing the game while you're doing it. So then in a few months they're like, guess what? We wrote some more scenes or we need to do these scenes now. Um, so uh Yeah. And in terms of television shows, I mean, yeah, sometimes also you don't know. It depends where the story goes. Like, there's definitely yeah. times where it's like, I wish this wasn't the case, but <laughs> makes most sense if we kill your character. And you're like, mm, cool, thanks. <laughs> so have yeah. you seen your work yet on Far Cry 6? Like, have you seen, have you gone on YouTube um, and watched or what? I've I've seen some stuff on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, because I've been traveling since it came out, like I haven't been in a place, um, uh, I'm waiting to play it, but I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely going to play it with some of the actors when I get back to Toronto. Oh yeah. Nice. (laughs) I'm not really a gamer. I've never like, I've never had it. I've never been a gamer, I guess. Not saying I don't like games. Um, I think they're cool. But you've um, never owned a PlayStation or anything? No. No, and not to be gendered about it, but I, especially at the time, growing up in the 90s, it was very much like a thing boys did. And yeah. I didn't have any bro- and I didn't have any brothers. So I was kind of like outside of that world anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you reckon yeah. you'll play it like to an audience or just you guys without like... Oh, interesting question. Mm. That's a good idea. I want to plant that seed. You should, because people would love to see that. Yeah. That would be fun. That would be fun. So when what was your reaction when you first saw the character? Like the the art of it or the the look of the character? When was that? Later um, it must have it been was, later on, yeah. Well, they changed her a little bit, but the first time I saw her image was my first meeting with oh really um, with with Naveed and, and okay. Grant our director um that's actually unusual so amazing yeah mm-hmm. yeah they had a poster I was in their off I was in the in the Ubisoft offices on like a Sunday and they're like do you want to see your character and I was like yeah nah. and they had the, they had a po <laughs> yeah I was like nah. <laughs> um they had a they had a poster of her and she was like in this like badass position and just her gun. I think I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I remember going, oh my God, she's so hot. <laughs> like I remember saying like, she's so cool. She's so hot. Oh my God. I can't believe, 
I get to play her. Like, <laughs> I was like, ah, I was freaking out. Um, uh, they changed her a little bit. I think they added the gray streaks. Like she, I'm pretty sure when I saw her, she didn't have the gray, the gray in her hair. Mm, okay. Um, um, but definitely she had braids and anyway. So what's it like? Cool. Because this game's a unique game in that you have to play off a male and female version of the lead character. And Sean said that you had to do the scenes with the different actors, right? So what was that like? Because I've played both male and female, and you've got a good chemistry with both. I don't know how you do it. So like, talk us through that. That's so such a good question, and it was a really interesting process because... We had to do it the same, uh, but there was definitely some flavors that come out that's different. My dynamic with, with a guy is different than my dynamic with a girl. And, um, and, and it's a great thing. I mean, that's what mm. makes life interesting is like kind of the nuance and behavior, right? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was, but, but it was funny because I, I wanted to be even more, like, I wanted to be different. My, my instinct as an actor is to go, mm. oh, I'm, I, if, if Clara is going to be flirty with Danny in any way, the way I'm flirting with a guy is different than the way I'm flirting with a girl. It's just, it's not going to be exactly the same. And so I wanted to like, even play it up more, but it's like the restrictions of the game in a way in, in mm. the engineering, like you can't be like super different. Um, but it was, it was really cool. I remember I, I think I'd set, so there's sort of one of the Dannys, either the male or the female will master the scene, meaning they'll do the first pass. And then the other Danny has to, do the same thing, like has to kind of follow the same choreography, same blocking, say the, the line in the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult for like what Nisa and Sean did is really hard. Very like, technical. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super technical. And um, uh, I think I had mastered the first scene with Sean, meaning I had I had done a few passes with him. So I was used to him and then and then I, and then Nisa came in and I went, I was like, oh my God, this is a, this is a different vibe. Like, That's but now I, yeah. now I'm used to, now I have to do it the way I did it with him, but I also want to do it different now. Um, mm. So it was also, it's this weird kind of, um, there's this, there's this delicate sort of line you walk where mm. you kind of have to make it work with both characters and not make your choices very very different or different at all so um it was it was interesting it was really interesting and i loved playing with both of them for completely different reasons like they would bring out a different thing in me um i'm you know like physically i'm taller than nisa and that's already a different dynamic than sean where I think Sean and I are close to the same height, which is like a different, it's a different dynamic when someone's close to your height and someone's smaller than you. Mm. It's like this interesting thing. So anyway, I learned a lot actually from that. I learned a lot about, um, See, I think, how to, how to stay alive in all, you know, and, and be um, conscious of, being honest with both actors but yet making the same choice it's like a, this is a weird it's a weird thing i know you gotta <laughs> i know you gotta go soon i've got a few more for you please mm -hmm. i was was it written in that like because playing through the game you're very commanding always come like commanding and always the leader in the room was that was that what navid told you how to play it or the the cinematic director or whoever that was, that how you were told to play it or did that just come out? Cause um, the presence was, you would, the presence that you had on the screen was just there the whole time. If that makes sense. That's, that's great. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, in a way, like mm. you get a really great description of your character, actually more descriptive than any film and TV job will give you. Mm. Like they told me everything, like this is her past, these were her parents, this is this was her first girlfriend, this was her first boyfriend, this is like how <laughs> old she was when she went to university, this is like what she did, this is like how she got um like that's fantastic how she how she got um became a part of libertad how she founded libertad how, all of that like and so that was um really helpful like it's really useful because you you really know where she came from so mm. knowing everything they gave me i know that she's incredibly passionate and she's kind of sacrificed everything to be in a position that she's in now and she's so she she's getting closer and closer to her objective so in a way it's like there's so much at stake and she needs to occupy this role otherwise the whole movement will fall apart so being conscious of that and knowing that it, it does endow you with with a level of of like uh gravitas it's like no i this is you mm. need to listen to me i mean i'm i'm your lives are in my hands like the nation is in my hands like so <laughs> yeah it's you you got in a way like she's got to be commanding otherwise it doesn't really work and you're not gonna really listen to her you must be proud though of what you've done here what you guys have done you guys must be very proud i'm guessing yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I I don't want to speak for other people, but I think the game looks amazing. Uh. I thought the writing was great. Um, I loved the team. I had so much fun doing it. So that's all you can really, you know, bet on in a way in this industry. Like you hope it's received well and it seems to be being received well, which is amazing, but I don't have control over how people are receiving it. The only thing I have control over is being you know, a good scene partner and as good of an actor as I can be. Mm. And, and I feel like in that way, I think we all did our best and, and we did it respectfully and, and uh, we brought out the best in each other in ways. So, um, yeah. I understand. Agree. Alex says, what was your favorite line in the game? Mine was American dream doesn't come in our color. That's a nice. That's a nice Ooh, line. I like that one. That was so good. Mm. That's so good. Oh my gosh, he's putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I mean, you, you said before your favorite. One of your favorite scenes was the fireworks. Yeah, yeah, but I but I do love that line. That's a great line, and I'm gonna steal that as my favorite for the steal moment. it from now on in any other interviews. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Da Daniel, you look can you can you tell her she looks gorgeous for me? Oh, thanks. How, how, You're so cute. <laughs> how has the how has the fan messages yeah. been? Have you got a few fan messages or what? Yeah, I've had some messages. I've had some people that, that did cosplay for for oh, Clara, yeah. like dressed up. That's cool. That was really that I can't wait for more of that. I can't wait one day to go to Comic Con for this, but um, yeah. Do you think you'll do? A, have been wonderful. Do you think you'll do a live signing or anything like that down the road? Yeah, I would do it for yeah. sure. Yeah. Cool. I I I feel like the fans are really like I have so much respect for the investment of time in in a way in the story mm. right like being a gamer and and like and so i feel like at least the messages i've received and again because i've never done this before um are so thoughtful like really um not just like oh thanks or good job it's it's very like yeah in the story they get invested mm. in the story almost in another level and um I, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm sort of you know blown away by that you no know, in in a way and um, yeah 
and super flattered and honored. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, have you got any other upcoming projects that you can talk about that we should keep well, an eye on? Sure. Well, I just, I'm on a series um, that's based on a graphic novel. Um, it's called Why the Last Man. I, um, I've been meaning to watch it. I think I'm, I think I'm going to um, love it. It is truly the best TV series I've ever been a part of. I mean, like in terms of wow. the content, the writing, the, mm. the story is, there's so many stories to tell. Um, and, and it's about a, a plague that kills all the mammals with a Y chromosome, mainly all the cisgender men. <laughs> so that's except right. for one <laughs> that's right of course yeah yeah, yeah. and um hence the name it, hence yeah. the name yeah <laughs> um uh. and it's just like it really starts to break open things to do with gender and and how we perform you know what does it mean to be a woman in a world where there's no cisgender men like how do you perform your femininity do you perform it what it, what does that look like and there's just like tons of questions and also the world is in an apocalypse like it's literally half the population died so it's like complete shit show um yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um but it's also like really funny and <laughs> shockingly really? um that was yeah, the word like, I'd, I'd think of it's it's like kind of a it's like a I don't want to say it's a dark comedy. It's not exactly a dark comedy. It's a but there's drama, elements but of there's that. comedic, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, that's on. It's on in, in the states. It's FX on Hulu, so it's on Hulu. Yeah. And I, in Australia, it's on another. I think network. it's on Foxtel here. I think I've seen. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's on some one of your streamers too, because my okay. friends in Australia have been watching it, but I don't remember. What I'm going to check it out. Shows. Are you a recurring role, or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm in eight out of the ten. Episodes. Oh, nice, um, nice. I is there an, is there a new it. seasons coming, or you can't say, or? Um, that's sort of up in the air at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. But we're hoping, we're, we're fingers crossed, eh? We're hoping something yeah. happens, yes. Yeah. Sure. Anything else mm -hmm. that you want to plug? Right now? No, I think that's like, that's my main, that's my main baby. Cool. That one in Far Cry. Mm -hmm. Not not a two bad projects to be a part of, I'll tell you right now. No. <laughs> can't complain. <it's> <laughs> I can't complain. I love them uh. both and I love both of the characters. And they're so different and... Anyway, it's, a, it's such a pleasure. Is there anything you want to say to the fans quickly? Um, you guys are so amazing. And thank you for coming out and supporting and and investing so much love and time in, in this game. Like we made it with a lot of love and we had a lot of fun. And I hope people continue to have fun playing it. I will. Thank you for coming on, Jess. <laughs> I hope you've had a had a good time. I've had a great time. You're a great interviewer. Laid back and your environment. Your fans are so nice. Laid back environment. Just chill. Two friends hanging out. That's it. Yeah, I love That's it. It's the vibe. I love it. No, it is. It's been a pleasure. I hope you have a a lovely night, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Likewise. Take care. Okay. Take care. Bye. And there you have it, everybody. Jess. Jess, Jess, Jess. What a fantastic guest. A lot of laughs, a lot of great insights. And I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. What do you think, guys? What's that site called, guys, where you can rank things? What's what's that called again? Do you know what I'm thinking of, guys? Excuse me. What's that? What's that site where you can sort of 
rank. You can sort of select. I'm trying to think of the name. Thank you, Daniel. Batman. Garbutt. Nico. W. Thanks, man. Batman, you enjoyed it? Tear Maker. Thank you, Garbutt. Yeah, yeah, Tear Maker. All right. I want to do a quick Tear Maker of Far Cry games. This is missing. The problem with these are is whoa. Hey, let go, let go, let go. Man in battle, we let go, we let go. Official Far Cry tier list. Ah, oh, this is villains. That's not bad. I like that. Villains. We could do that one. Please get Giancarlo Esposito on here. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to. Will it happen? That's another story. Uh, nah, none of these tier lists have Far Cry 6. That's the problem. No one's updated it, man. Oh, hold on. Here we go, we've got one. Alright, I reckon we do this tier list. Thoughts? Hey Dan, do you think you could get... Do you think an actor like Giancarlo would not get the full script? Good question, Daniel. Um, he would get the full script, I think. Oh, you, re you reckon he would? Mm. It's actually a decent question. I don't, I don't want to say he would get special treatment, but you would think that he would. You'd think he would get special treatment. Bella ciao, bella ciao, 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 de bella medo. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, guys. We made it work. We made it work. Okay. Whoops. 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 Okay, guys. So... Far Cry tier list. What the hell is that? Don't worry about that one. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start with Far Cry 1. Hmm. Is C too harsh? Do you think... You reckon A for Far Cry 1? You actually reckon A? A or B? B? Yeah, I'm thinking B. C's a bit harsh. C's a bit harsh. So we'll go B for Far Cry. Well, I played the other day. Actually, pretty pretty good game for the time it came out. you got to think about it that way. Like, the game came out. Let's have a look when it actually came out. Far Cry 1. Far Cry 1. 
Far Cry 1. I mean, it's just called Far Cry. Wow. Yeah. It was pretty good for the time, guys. Yeah, it's, you can't give it a C. It's either a B or an A. 2004 it came out. I mean, that's pretty good for the time it came out, you know? We'll go B for now. We can switch it up. Far Cry 2. Now, this is a tough one for me because... <sighs> Would you go... It's very underrated game, in my opinion, Far Cry 2. It had some very good elements, but also some lackluster elements. Very, most over-detailed game in the series. I'm thinking A. What do you guys think? I'm thinking A for Far Cry 2. It did have some bad, bad parts, like the story. I would say was a bit of a negative. You reckon A2? Yeah. I think we'd leave it at A for now. I was playing through it the other day again. Yeah. Kiss my, you're right. Alright, we'll leave it at, uh... We'll leave it at that for now. Far Cry 3, I mean... Would you agree with that? Top tier? I mean, it has to be top tier, does it not? Far Cry 3? I think that's pretty unanimous. You know, this is the best villain they ever produced. In my opinion, Michael Mando. Uh, yeah, of course, top tier. You guys agree? It's got to be top tier. Yeah, best villain. Really stepped up. Gameplay, everything worked. I think we have to go... We have to go SS for that. Next up, Far Cry... Okay, so what's this? These ones, we're not going to do that. Blood Dragon. Blood Dragon, baby. Blood Dragon. Joking, SS for me. Nah, it's gotta, it's gotta be S tier for me. Here's why. Soundtrack, okay, best soundtrack in the series for one. Okay, it's got dragons in it. It's got that vi 80s vibe, that that fucking retro feel. It used that three, the engine of Far Cry 3. It was very similar gameplay, which was great. So it translated well. Over. Uh, Rex Colt. Was that his name? Rex Colt? Rex Colt. Let's have a look. Yeah, Power. Rex Power Colt. What a great character. Man, I can't wait to play that game again. It's a phenomenal game. Phenomenal game. You know what, I might put some of the music on now, actually, while we're here. What a soundtrack. Probably get copyrighted. Who gives a fuck? Just listen to this music and just tell me this game wasn't good. I mean, I'm going to play this game again on stream. All right. Next up. Far Cry 4. God, this this music's epic. Far Cry 4B. Thoughts? I thought Pagan Min was sort of underutilized. He wasn't in the game as much. I get 
guitar. Listen to that guitar. Now, soundtrack aside, it was a very, very fun game. Uh, okay, so... What have we got here? Far Cry 4B. Very little screen time. The gameplay was similar to 3. Not many upgrades, really, from 3. Um, it just sort of hit... It missed the mark a little bit. Still a good game. I still liked it. Don't get me wrong. Elephants and all sorts of things to do. Very detailed game in, in its own right. Still enjoyed it. Uh, a bit of co-op with friends. So I'll go B for now. Now I think was Primal next? I think Primal was next. I'm going to go Primal C, guys. I, I, it's just a personal opinion. I, I just thought Primal was a bit phoned in, guys. Uh... I don't know what you think. I just thought Primal wasn't that good. I don't know. It, it just was very bare bones. I like the concept. It just needed a little bit more in it. It was very... When you got towards that end game, it was very um, monotonous, you know? There was no replay value. Eventually it got tiresome, is what I'm trying to say. So, for Far Cry Primal, I got it at C. <laughs> the voice acting was good, yeah. In that in that new language, you're right. I don't even remember the voice acting. Let's have a look. Deborah Wilson? Terence Carson? What? There's no way. Wow. I did not know there was a full cast of characters. There you go. I don't even remember it. It was that forgettable. Anyway. Deborah Wilson is phenomenal, but this game was a bit of a dud for me, so that's going to go C. I mean, it was still, it was just still, I'm being a bit harsh. Yeah, Deborah Wilson was in it. How's that holo? Holo. Um, Alright, next up, we got five. What do you think? Five a B? Uh, a little bit harsh. A little bit harsh. Um, you think it's C? Yeah, I, I know a lot of people that would say C. I'm going to go B. See, there's different people in the different spectrums. Some would say A. Some would say C, B. I'm going to go B. I thought Joseph Seed and the Seed family were fantastic. But I didn't actually like the story structure and the missions and the checkboxy nature of it all, which is Far Cry, like, but it was starting to get a little bit at that point, you know what I mean? So, you reckon Far Cry 2 is the best in the series, yeah? Far Cry 5 is good, now you're going to convince me, you're going to convince me to put it up. New Dawn had some good mechanics, but the villains were boring. Well, we're not talking New Dawn here, we're talking 5. We're talking 5 at the moment. I don't know. I'm thinking back to 5. Joseph Seed really was a phenomenal character. But the missions were tedious. I agree, Garbutt. The missions were tedious. We have to go with B. The mission structure was tedious. Nah, I'm sticking to B. We're, we're not just talking villains. We're talking everything. you got to put the collective into this tier system. You know? There's also other elements I didn't like as much. Like, where were the sharks? <laughs> no. Alright. Who's up next? Who's up next? We have New Dawn. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> sorry, not sorry. I don't know, guys. I <laughs> this is clearly the worst in a franchise. I mean, it was it was clearly the worst. I don't think anyone in his argue in, is going to argue that. I wouldn't say fucking bad. Like, let's go bad. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't tell you one thing that happened in that game. It was so forgettable. And it even had Joseph Seed in the game. Even he couldn't save it. Our man Greg. Greg Brick couldn't save the film. Frontman, how you doing? Yeah, so I'm going to go, have to go bad. I'm going to have to go bottom to you uh, for New Dawn. And then Far Cry 6. Eh? I'm going to place it in A. You guys let me know what you think. Far Cry 6 for A. Thoughts? Agree, solid A, yep. Yeah, Far Cry 6 has the best um, gameplay of all the games, in my opinion. The gunplay, the variety there, the Supremo. You could make a case that Far Cry 6 is a B if you're getting a bit tired of the formula. I would understand you saying that. But for me, I would give it an A for the story. It was by far the best story, in my opinion, of all the Far Cry games. Best probably cast of characters, voice acting, gameplay, graphics. Yeah, it when you look at it, pretty good. I don't like the level system either, Louis. I agree. I don't like it. There's definitely issues with six. Don't get me wrong. But uh, the progression wasn't good. I feel like you can get all the best stuff early on. You can. You can, Garba. But that was the point. Do I like that? No. Not at all. It's probably one of the worst XP systems in a game. Still, I would still give it an A. Because it's a minor detail for me, an XP thing. Like, if, you know, you're playing... You're not playing for the progression, in my opinion in this game you're playing for the story for the overall fun factor Far Cry 4 can't be the same as 5 yeah you're right actually I mean we could drop Far Cry 4 to a C actually I don't know what do you think of the list what do you think of this tier list have we are we close Hmm. I think it's a pretty decent list. <laughs> uh, Far Cry Three is overrated, says unknown you'd want a name like unknown throwing those accusations no I've heard that actually a lot lately Far Cry 3 is overrated I disagree man I disagree it might not hold up as well now but good list okay let's save this list we might do the we might do the villains as well while we're here. Tier lists. Bang. Alright.
Far Cry. Antagonists. Okay. Far Cry antagonists. Let's have a look here. Who have we got? We've got the Jackal. E. Thoughts? Jackal at E. I can't even see half of these characters. Who is that? I have no idea who that is. Can anyone make that out? Is that the guy from... I can't even tell. Vas ST. It's Hoyt. It is Hoyt. I was going to say, like, is that... Is that Hoyt? So, Jackal... Do you reckon B for Jackal? No, no, I, didn't, I wasn't putting Jackal in E, don't worry. Jackal, I would say B or A. What do you think? B or A? Jackal... B or A? I loved how in Far Cry 2, the gun's getting old and rusty and how it's... They got stuck. Yeah, Sammy. I agree. I agree. There should be a poll, guys. Do you see that poll? In the YouTube chat. B. I'm seeing B's. I'm seeing B's. I'm seeing A's. Pagan Min. Pagan Min deserves an A, I think. Pagan Min deserves an A. Great character, just didn't get enough screen time for me. Didn't get enough screen time. If he had more time, then possibly he could have been a... Could have been an S. Could have been an S. If he was given more time. Troy Baker was good, yeah. I gotta to talk to him about that character. I didn't I didn't mention it last time we chatted. Okay, next up. I can't even see this. Is this the twins? No, this is someone else. I can't even tell that that's just shit. Okay. Who's next? The Seed family. Faith Seed. Ah, forgettable. I mean, forgettable Faith Seed. See? That's Yuma from Far Cry 4. Okay, well, what would you give Yuma? Because I don't even remember. <laughs> you know. Faith Seed, come on. She's no good. Hold on. Jackal's... Just got, he's just got to A, Jackal. All right, all right, Jackal. Jackal's A, Jackal's A. Uh, I'm thinking Faith seed, seed as C. Daniel thinks D. I liked how, I liked Faith and Jacob C a lot. Which one's Jacob Seed? This one? Yeah, Jacob C. I'm, I'm tempted to do this for all three of them. Thoughts? I just... They were they were overshadowed by this man here who... Bang. S tier. I mean, that might be a little bit harsh. 
that might look, be a little bit harsh. <laughs> All right, next up, this guy from Far Cry Primal. D, 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 D. <laughs> Can you tell me who these last two are? Can someone tell me who these last two are, please? I can't even tell. I can't tell. I'm either going blind or something. Left one is Yuma. Okay, yeah, you mentioned that before. And the right is Blood Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Yuma... I don't even remember Yuma, to be honest. Is that bad? Yuma is the antagonist in four. Pagan Min second in command? What? Are you serious? D. I don't even remember Yuma. As sad as it is. Jacob to B. I agree with that. Let's put Jacob to B. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Jacob was the best of the family there. We'll put him to B. I agree, I agree. And you know what? We're going to bring her... We're going to bring Deborah Wilson to C. And we're going to move this bloke to D. Okay? And then... That. Thoughts? Where's Anton? Oh, where's Anton? We just realized... Okay, Anton's not here, but I would put him in S tier or A. What do you think? Anton S or A? Anton S or A? Uh, far cry. Okay. Here we go. We can... Anton played the part. S, S, A, A. Okay, let's just do this again. So we've got Vas. And Joseph C today. We've got Pagan Min. We've got Jackal. Where's Jackal? The Jackal's not even here. Who does these lists? They need to be shot. It's so poorly done. Fucking hell. These lists are terrible. Anyway, Anton S. So we throw Anton in S. So how do we get around that? We crop an image in of him. We hack it. <laughs> oh no, what am I doing? This is not working. This is not working. Anton. And <laughs> it's so not working. Anyway, he's <laughs> he's S tier. There we go. I'll add him into the graphic later on. I'm going to post this on Twitter. See what people think. Alright guys, thank you for tuning in today. It's been a pleasure to be with you. Um, make sure you become a member of the channel. Because I will have an exclusive members only interview with Naveed, the narrative director. That's only going to be for members of the channel who have access to that. And there'll be one or two interviews per month for members only, okay? So make sure you get in and uh, and you can ask him direct questions as well by being a member. Guys, as always, it's been a pleasure. I hope you have a lovely day, night, wherever you are. And I want you to please take care and I'll see you later.
the greatest interviewer of all time. Dan Allen Gaming. If there's one podcast you want to hear this year, it's Dan Allen Gaming. Dan, we've got a job to do. Mr. Allen, I've been waiting for you, Mr. Dan Allen. Anyone who's anyone has heard of the likes of you, especially your YouTube channel. It's amazingly entertaining. Good job. This is Geralt of Rivia, and you're watching Dan Allen Gaming. Yeah. This is Agent 47. Subscribe to Dan Allen Gaming. He's a great guy. I always always knew we were destined for something great to happen. A lot of people want to change their cards, not me. I like the hand we've been dealt. I'm gonna come find you, little man thing. Dan, I knew you'd love me. Come on now. Just a little taste. Dan Allen Gaming. He's a lovely boy. <laughs> Super Dan, you number one. Woohoo! This is Colt calling out to Dan the Animal Allen. I'm gonna break this fucking loop. Oh, I'm gonna break your neck. You're watching Dan Allen Gaming, and you're going to regret it. Dan, you and I are gonna take back the universe for humanity. We're having a problem with Metal Gear, and I need your help. So contact me by codec, damn it. Dan Allen, you and I are going dark now. Are you being cheeky, Dan? I'd rather keep this for close encounters. <laughs> going into Dan Allen Gaming, or else I'm coming after you. You're fucking down. Been interviewed by Dan Allen of Dan Allen Gaming. Not to be mistaken for Van Allen. You know the belt? No, not the same guy. Not even related. Okay, Jackie Hour. All the best to you. Just don't cross me. Dan Allen Gaming, you have got to be one of the best things to come out of Australia. Did you know that? You and me, we would have been unstoppable. Anyways, how lost for life, partner? Your face, your ass. What's the difference? It's okay, Dan. I know you didn't mean to hurt me. But you shouldn't have done that. It fucking hurts! Let's find out if Dan Allen Gaming really is the best fucking show in town. Dan! You eat you babies! babies. Everybody, Everybody knows, knows that. Knows that Dan. You eat motherfucking babies! Everybody motherfucking knows that, Dan. You better get your white ass up, because you're about to be down.